Welcome to the Angry Nerd Podcast. My name is Arshawn Wade, aka the Angry Nerd. Urgh. The Angry Nerd Podcast is taped in front of a live Facebook audience from my mom's basement. The Angry Nerd Podcast is brought to you in part by some bad life choices and a few shattered dreams. The Angry Nerd Podcast is made possible by money that my wife gives me from my SSI check, some chick named Joni, and proceeds from listeners like you. If you want to be one of the listeners that helps contribute to this show getting better and better, go to Cash App. My Cash App is dollar sign the Angry Nerd. But hold on. Once again, we do not glorified internet beg. No, we have merch. You can get yourself one of the hashtag entanglement tees brought to you by the Angry Nerd Podcast. Or you can get one of the channel shirts, which comes in black or white. Inbox me your size if you follow me on Facebook. If you listen to me on Podbean, Spotify, or YouTube, send me an email at theangrynerdpodcast at gmail.com. Let me know your size, your address, and it'll be 20 bucks plus shipping. Holler at the kid. I come to you tonight with a heavy heart. Laden with a burden that is specific to the male species. Heartbreak. When one of your heroes does something unmanly. How do you deal with a hero that does something unmanly? I don't know. I'm torn. Okay, let me give you some context. One of my all-time favorite comedians is Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb is hands down one of the funniest dudes to ever pick up a mic. Just hilarious my brand of comedy it's not the kind of comedy that I do because that's just not my niche that's not my lane it just the stuff that he does it just wouldn't work if I did but I agree with 99.9% of what he says the 0.01% that I disagree with is what I was what I saw recently this past week there's another comedian, a friend of his, Ray Grady, who has the um, alpha male, alpha nation thing going on. And uh, shout out to Ray Grady. And, and for all intents and purposes, shout out to Corey Holcomb. I still have a lot of love for the 5150 crew. I, I love that show. He has a uh, podcast internet show known as the 5150 show. And I consider myself an honorary chat room goon. 5150, what? You know, like I love the show. I love Corey Holcomb. And watching that show is where I was introduced to Ray Grady. And then I saw some of his internet videos and things like that and skits. And he's a very talented guy, very funny. And he and Corey are friends. And they had a conversation on air that as a man, I thought should have been had off air. Sometimes as men, we will have conversations that get dicey. But. It is our responsibility, 100% our responsibility to handle these things responsibly. And I don't think that this situation between Corey Holcomb and Ray Grady was handled, handled responsibly. I just don't think it was handled responsibly at all. And I'm going to say that the fault lies with Corey. And let me tell you something. My wife is angry at me to this day Corey came to Arkansas maybe three years ago maybe three or four years ago I think she was pregnant with my son at the time and I took her to see I love Corey and she's so angry at me the way I laughed and laughed and laughed and I'm such a fan I was I'm not that man groupy type of dude but I paid to make sure I could take a picture with Corey and shake his hand and everything like that meet and greet side of the game so I had to say that before I say anything that people can perceive as hate or I'm talking shit about Corey or anything like that. So Corey called my man Grady out on a cap, an alleged cap. And there's a whole show titled That's a Cap now. 
Like you can look at it. I don't think it was titled that initially. Messy ass internet people put that on there. That's a cap. And I think that capping is, I think we all cap a little bit. I mean, there are some of us who have a problem, who go overboard, habitual cappers, you know, we all know those kind of cats. <laughs> and he called Ray Grady out as capping. And it got personal. I think some personal things got said. And I think that Grady's feathers got ruffled a little bit because, you know, he kind of jabbed back. I caught a couple of little jabs, but I felt like, you know, Corey started that. And as the older person, as the OG in the situation, I think he should have known better than to put him out there like that because he created an environment for whole shit. You understand what I'm saying when I say that? I think men will understand what I'm saying when I say whole shit. Because that wasn't manly at all. Ooh. To front on your guy in front of the world. I see 50, 60,000 people watching the 5150 show. That's the world as far as I'm concerned. That many people viewing one thing, having an opinion about this interaction between these guys man that's a lot of people so as far as i'm concerned some unmanly shit happened and nothing was done to correct it now Corey says that you know he called grady later on and you know locked in with him but i don't agree with that i think that if you publicly got down wrong with someone that it's your responsibility to publicly make it right with them. That's what I think. I, I, I don't speak for all men. I don't know everybody's man code. The man code is relative to what circles you run in. But personally, what I believe is that if you wrong a guy... Or you get down wrong. You feel like you got down wrong. And obviously Corey felt like he got down wrong. Or else why would he call him? Why would he check in to make sure that they're good? So. Ray Grady. Has his own podcast. Alpha Nation. And he was on with. Was it Earthquake? OG in the comedy game. Earthquake. He was on with Earthquake. And of course they addressed the situation between. The interaction between Corey Holcomb and Ray Grady. I try to always say their entire name, their state, because I don't want it to be perceived as if I know either of them personally, because I don't. I know people who will matter of factly say people refer to people by <laughs> their first name as if they know the person. So I don't want that to be misconstrued. I'm just a fan voicing his opinion. They addressed it. And from my perspective, I feel like Ray Grady addressed it in a respectful way. That's what I believe. That's my opinion about it. And then Corey responded. See, this that was the buildup. That was the premise. Now we get to the problem, the real problem that I have, because I felt like up until this point, nothing had been done or said that we couldn't come back from as men. That was my opinion about it up until this point. This past week's 5150 show broke my heart. Because I watched someone who I respect a great deal in the aspect of comedy and being funny conduct himself in a very unmanly like fashion. And I didn't like it. And here's the, th here's the problem that I have with it. People who are around you when you have a certain stature or you have reached a certain level in the game, they fail to check you when you step out of bounds. And I feel like the big homie stepped out of bounds and nobody checked him. 
I've seen other podcasts like the Joe Budden podcast. He was mentioning something and my man Ma was like, yo, why are you even talking about that? We don't even talk about shit like that. That's corny. We don't do that here. And I really respected the fact that he checked his man and let him know. We don't, that's not what we do. We have integrity. So whatever, whatever was on Corey's chest, I felt like somebody should have stepped in and was like, yo, don't do that. And I think that the good brother, Mr. Zoe Williams, is that person. And that's why whenever he gave the response, he did it solo so that no one could check him. But every now and again, as men, we need to be checked. Because what he did and what he said was some whole shit. If it goes bad between you and your man, that loyalty shouldn't change. Because when we are around each other and we crew, we boys, we loved ones, we, we, we fuck with each other. Like, on the, this is my brother side of the game. Like, this is my peoples. This what this my guy. I don't care what goes on. We should never divulge personal information about one another. Especially not to the world. And I know this from personal experience. Me and my best partner, A1 from day one. Me and this dude, if you saw me, you saw him. If you saw him, you saw me. And he, without rehashing it, he did something that I viewed as a betrayal. And we had it out. We, we don't fuck with each other no more. And one of our mutual friends, you know, he said something to me that was big in the scope of manhood. Because he said, yo, during this entire situation with you and boy, man, he's never said anything negative about you. He's never said one foul thing or he ain't never divulged some shit like, oh, well, y'all think boy this, woo, 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 or try to sell your name in any kind of way. And, you know, of course, I was still hurt because I felt betrayed. So I'm like, how could he? I'm thorough. I'm When it comes to that friendship, that friendship institution, every letter of the word, I'm that. Loyal, trustworthy, dependable reliable all of that like when it comes to the institution of friendship there's no one that i call a friend who's going to say arshan did some whole shit by me now there's some chicks out here that can say i did some whole shit by him and i own that but when it comes to the brotherhood when it comes to this man shit i eat you eat you eat i eat we getting money together. We, we're in the streets together. We're watching each other's back. We're, we're protecting each other. We are providing for each other. We are teaching and learning from each other. We're doing all of this. And for some, for some reason, something happens and it's gone bad. Now, all of a sudden, now, mind you, this is somebody I spent every day damn near of my life with from the age of like 19 to what? 24 25 so we know things about each other man we both could have said some stuff to our to our wives at the time that could have ruined our relationships we could have said something to some of the other guys to where they'd have been like man you motherfuckers you some wild boys because we used to go on some capers my street guys, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> we was wild dudes out there in the streets. But later on in the game, because we both fathers and we married and, you know, we're out of the streets and everything like that. We came back together. And although we had our differences or whatever, and we, we, we duped it out and all that shit. 
I felt like we could reconcile on the strength that neither one of us went on a smear campaign against the other. We wasn't out here talking about, oh, my man's ain't shit. Oh, he ain't this or he that. We didn't do that. And we very well could have. We both know dirt about each other. Because like I said, we was wild boys out here. We could have relayed some information that put each other in a cross. But we didn't do that. We stuck to the code. And what I saw from Corey was that he he's hurt or bitter or angry about some other shit and he took it out on someone who was close to him I don't care whether or not there was validity in what he said whether great Ray Grady has this kind of money or that kind of money or he lives with this or has that that's not important to me what is important to me is someone with a voice like Corey Holcomb just did some ho shit on a massive scale and I don't like it I don't like it at all because let's just be honest as black men, we don't have a lot of people that we can look up to when it comes to real shit. And I viewed him, and to a degree I still do. I just feel like he just got a, a bad mark on his report card with this shit right here. And whatever he has going on that had him step outside of his character and produce ho shit. He needs to get that reconciled because, and I commented, I don't care. I commented, man, it's a bad look for the OG because it is a bad look because you got youngsters and people who are a lot younger than he is like me looking up to him because that's this one whole move that I've peeped from him doesn't invalidate all of the other ironclad information that he shared on the manhood side of things that's not to say that and because he so called put Ray Grady's business out there that doesn't invalidate all of the valid things that I've heard Ray Grady say not only on the 5150 show but also on Alpha Nation because I love and respect the information that comes from both of these guys. And I'm not going to pick a side. Oh, it's 5150. Oh, it's Alpha Nate. I'm not. I think that that happens way too much in the black community. I think this cancel culture shit is way out of control. But I do think that when one of our heroes, that's how I look at Corey Holcomb. He's one of my heroes. When one of our heroes do some whole shit, you address them you address the whole shit he's not beyond criticism he hasn't gotten so high that he can't be critiqued that he can't be corrected obviously there's something going on in his life to where he's compromised himself in relation to manhood because that was some unmanly shit that was very unmanly and from personal experience I'll tell you if that had have happened with me and my partner in the past I don't think that we could have patched things up that's why I said up until Corey made this response I felt like the situation was salvageable okay you fronted on my man a little bit okay you are on your platform alright if you felt like I wasn't being 100% forthcoming okay fuck it I get it okay you you gave a response on your platform alright 
I don't all the way rock with what you said. I don't think that you all the way represented it the way, whatever the case may have been. But once you open the world to our personal lives, yo, you know, like when you play in the dozens, like it's supposed to be like mama jokes is off limits. I felt like that's that's what this is. What they call a long pole, something like that. It was some old school ass term that they have for when you play in the dozens and someone said something about someone's mother. You broke the rules, OG. You broke the rules, man. And I know as smart as Corey Holcomb is, he know what he did with some whole shit. And let me tell you how big a fan I am. I tried to rationalize it. Oh, he just creating controversy. You know what I'm saying? To get to get the views up. You know, uh, that's a cap. That's probably one of the most watched videos from the 5150 show right now. Because everybody wants to go see, oh, how to get started. That's a cap. Everybody's going to see, that's a cap. So I'm like, no, no, no. He ain't do no whole shit. He was, he on some next level thinking shit. Him and Grady worked this out together. They doing this together. That's not true. He 100% did some whole shit. And I do not like it. Now. No one's laid hands on anybody. And as a fighter. I think very simple. I feel like. <laughs> As long as ain't nobody laid hands, we can kind of fix it. And sometimes in some instances, even after hands have been laid, it can be fixed. But it'll never be the same, man. And you have to recognize, Corey Holcomb has to recognize that he put folk in the game that might not ever be fixed. It may never be fixed. It's one thing to talk shit about Stephen A. Smith or talk shit about Shaq or talk shit about Kanye West. But this Ray Grady. I'm like, I don't even know how far back you can go and find videos of him on the 5150 show. Three, four, five years. It's been some years that I've been watching the 5150 show. And it's been some years that Ray Grady has been a recurring guest. It's been umpteen times Corey has said, this my man's. I love you, brother. Like, I love you. Even on that show when he was calling the cap. Man, I love you. You know what I'm saying? You my man's. Woo, woo, woo. So by his own admission, this is my people's. And you did some real bogus shit, big homie. It was it was bogus. And I think that we got to have somebody, a, an, an OG that Corey respects and Ray Grady respects to bring these brothers together and to fix this. Because I think that Corey Holcomb is necessary. I think that Ray Grady is necessary. No one should be written off. But I think that this was a, uh, a teachable moment. When feathers get ruffled, someone has to have the testicular fortitude to walk away. Somebody should have got up and left before it got out of hand. See, we have to learn to take preventative maintenance as black men. Men in general. But as I say from time to time, I'm black first. So... My vanilla brethren, don't be put off by that, okay? Just rock with the information. Make it applicable to you and how you rock in the white world, okay? You do have to understand that we live in separate worlds. We live in the same world, but different. We all in it together, but we're not in it the same. And that's one of the differences is the lanes that we travel in based on our racial backgrounds. So don't be put off by that. But as black men... We need to learn when we need to get our heels out of the dirt. There is a time and a place to dig your heels in and not move. 
but that isn't always the case most of the times in fact it's not the case I pose this question to some brothers should our convictions as men be inflexible no they sh yes they should I'm sorry no they shouldn't our convictions and our beliefs should be flexible because if new information is presented to us if our beliefs and convictions are inflexible we can't receive new information and if we can't receive new information do you know what that means what I thought and believed at 19 I would still think and believe today at 35 and if you conduct yourself in the exact same manner at 35 as you did at 19 that's sad and very unfortunate because that means there are 15 16 good years worth of horrible experiences for people who've come in contact with you a 35 year old 40 year old person who still reasons like a 19 year old is a disaster and I say that to say this making our convictions and beliefs flexible someone of the stature of Corey Holcomb can hear information like this and say hey maybe the young brother has a point maybe I need to reach out in a real way because let's be honest big homie that little that was bullshit the way that you came about it hey you all right you good or however the conversation went that was bullshit and sometime we have to take our ego and send it to the cleaners for a little bit the ego is necessary. I don't think that Corey Holcomb could be Corey Holcomb without his ego. You know? But in instances of people who you've had around you, who you've deemed suitable to be up under you. So there is some genuine love, care, and concern for a person who you've allowed to be in your sphere especially someone at his level in the game so that is a relationship that is worth salvaging that is a relationship that is worth putting in some effort to maintain and if that be the case then you should be open to packing up your ego for just a little bit and really reaching out to Ray Grady and sincerely apologizing. Are you too big to apologize? Are you too big to admit fault? I'm not going to do like the clickbaiters and the messy dudes on the internet who will bring up this situation. That's it. That's not my energy at all. My energy is hoping that I could say something with my my 20 followers on YouTube hoping that somehow or another this gets to Corey Holcomb and he sees a genuinely concerned fan for two necessary black men in entertainment because they don't just tell jokes and make you laugh and make you feel good they bring ironclad necessary information to a demographic to a group of people who wouldn't otherwise get this information and when you have two powers like that not working in tandem when they could and be creating a superpower they're great both of them are great but you get great and great and put them together that's magic sure neither one of them needs the other one to be successful 
But how much more successful could they be working together? Oftentimes when you see black enterprises, that's how it falls to shit. It's because we can't put aside petty grievances. Nobody wants to put their pride to the side. Nobody wants to pack up the pride. Nobody wants to put away the ego for a little while. And say, hey man, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Can we fix this? Because I recognize that you have value, Grady. You might be capping. You may cap from time to time. I'll give Corey Holcomb that. Maybe the brother do cap from time to time but in front of the whole world is that really the time that you expose that don't get me wrong now this is some run of the mill off the street who knows this guy (laughs) let's roast him with his good lying self but my G my guy my dude really no Here's the equivalent of what Corey Holcomb did to Ray Grady. You let somebody borrow an outfit and you guys go out and you say, hey man, make sure you don't get nothing on my shirt. I've known people like that. I've seen that situation happen before. I've seen that play out before. And I think, oh, you are bogus. And it broke my heart that I had to Consider someone that I look up to, someone that I admire so much, like Corey Holcomb, to have done. I'm not going to say Corey Holcomb is bogus, but he did some bogus shit. I am going to say that he did something bogus. And I don't think that that has to define him, but if he doesn't rectify that and figure out a way to reconcile the relationship between himself and Ray Grady I think that sets the stage for him to become bogus I think that sets the stage for him to be bunny ears canceled hate that cancel culture shit but if we as men black men can't figure out how to work together take care of each other work through our differences how do we expect to survive we'll march talk about black lives matter and then we will not work with each other we'll call out the wickedness we'll call out the racism and then we will deal underhandedly with one another I don't see how those two things can exist it's do we love ourselves or or, or or not and if we do which a lot of us say that we do then why can't we figure out a way to make things right when we do wrong by each other we don't have to be perfect we're going to do wrong we're going to mess up we're going to make mistakes simple and plain why do we not want to make them right when we recognize that we're wrong I know you're Corey Holcomb you don't need nobody but we need you we need you And we need you to be able to accept the fact that you did some hoe shit and fix it. Because there's a whole lot of us looking up to you. You and Ray Grady talk about how a bunch of us grow up bitch raised with no fathers. And then we hear some men like Corey Holcomb and Ray Grady talking some real man shit. And it resonates with us, with the inherent man, with the inherent alpha that resides in us. And some of us hang on to every word. Devour it by the spoonful. Can't wait for Tuesday. 
Can't wait for anything that Ray Brady does. Can't wait for anything that Corey Holcomb does. It says Corey Holcomb, click. Comedy Hype got about four good clicks out of me before I realized it was clickbait and we don't fool with Comedy Hype. You know? Just because I saw Corey Holcomb. It's a no-brainer. Boop! I hit the button. I'm watching. Because I know my man's got some information for me. He's got some comedy for me. He's got some information for me. And I'm disheartened. Because I feel like my man's has done some bogus shit. And instead of humbling himself and really reaching out to a brother that he did wrong to, because I'm not afraid to say it. I ain't nobody. Yet, you did wrong. You fucking did wrong. Corey Holcomb did wrong by Ray Grady in the That's a Cap show. And in this previous week's episode of the 5150 show, he doubled down on that wrong. He doubled down on that wrong. And that that's disheartening. That pisses me off. Because that was a real whole move. What he did on That's a Cap was just bogus. But what he did this past week, that was whole shit. And if anybody else had a pull what he pulled, he'd be the one saying it all over the internet. That was whole shit. And this is a challenge from just a nobody ass fan. I'm not calling Corey Holcomb a hoe. What I am saying is that Corey Holcomb did some hoe shit. And I would like for him to redeem himself by making it right. Because let's say for the sake of arguments that Ray Grady was capping. Who the fuck is he hurting if he capping? To where you hurt y'all's relationship like that. Who the fuck is he hurting? If he might be making himself seem like he's a little bit higher caliber cat than he is. If he might be putting a little bit on for the camera. Who's he really hurting? No one. So did it have to be put out like that? No. Not when this is a friend. So that was bogus. And in this past week was ho shit. And as a super fan of the 5150 show, man, I almost ran over here to my dresser and grabbed my Side Chicks Matter shirt. And my what you, what my main girl won't do, my Side Chick Wheel shirt. And my black template shirt. All my 5150 gear and put it up here just so I could show how big of a fan I am of Corey Holcomb. So this ain't just one dude up here on the internet talking shit. This is someone who values Corey Holcomb and the 5150 show. Hey, Darlene. <laughs> Sorry, had to do that. Love me some Darlene. But I digress. My hope is that Corey Holcomb fixes this shit. And I know that Mr. Zoe Williams wants that as well and I know that he's the kind of person from what I've seen on his show and the information that he shares that he wants these two black men that he values to mend fences so the takeaway for my listeners is this doing some ho shit doesn't take away your man card but it does put a negative mark on it like returning a book late to the library telling off on my age a little bit do they even still have libraries (laughs) 
another bad mark goes on your your man card when you recognize that you've done wrong and you don't do anything to fix it another bad mark goes on your your man card when you refuse to see the error of your ways when you refuse to admit that you wronged somebody and when you refuse to reconcile with the person that you've wronged when you refuse to make amends with the person that you've wronged when you allow your ego to keep you from operating in your manhood it sets the stage to lose yourself you're setting the stage of losing yourself because you're compromising masculine integrity to me toxic mask excuse me toxic masculinity is what I saw come from the good brother Corey Holcomb on the 5150 show this past Tuesday night that's toxic masculinity when you conduct yourself in the fashion of a hoe I don't believe that that's who that brother is I don't believe that that's his energy that's his lane that's his space I don't believe him to be that kind of man at all but that was very hoe like and I hope that he can get on the road to redeeming what he lost in that space because when you do ho shit you you lose something on the manhood side of the game you lose something and you set the stage to become something else so my hope is that little old peon like me a snippet of this gets back to the OG and it rattles his cage to see how broken hearted one of his fans is based on his behavior and his conduct so I'd like to sign off tonight by saying Corey Holcomb my name is Arshon Wade aka the angry nerd fix it it's not up to Ray Grady to reach out to you. It's not up to Ray Grady to figure out a place to meet in Atlanta or Houston or wherever the fuck. It's up to you, OG. Figure it out. Fix it. My name is Arshon Wade, a.k.a. The Angry Nerd. Peace.